Hi, thanks very much for uh, coming to my webinar. Um, my name is Ernie Chen. I'm the founder of PreTechNow.ai, though many of you might know me as the managing member of QTS Capital Management, which is a commodity pool operator and trading advisor. But uh, today I'm going to talk about what, how not to use machine learning in trading, because you must have heard a lot about how to use machine learning in trading. So I focus on how, what not to do. Um, and the reason for that is this uh, word of wisdom from a giant in the industry, Marcus Lopez de Prado. He said, most machine learning hedge fund fails. Indeed, a recent survey uh, have found that um, a overwhelming majority of people who use machine learning in trading have not found any value. And the reason is they have used it wrong. Most people who use machine learning have tried to directly predict the market. Maybe they want to generate a trading signal uh, on the E-mini, or they want to generate a trading signal on uh, uh, GameStop, whatever. That is almost guaranteed to fail. Well, I wouldn't say almost guaranteed, but I think it's a, a overwhelming probability that it's going to fail because machine learning has a, uh, any machine learning predict model has many parameters. And so it is very easy to overfit to the past um, noise. Uh, and also there's low signal to noise ratio for financial data, because if there's a strong signal to noise ratio, people would have arbitrage against it already, right? So it's by default that when, when the uh, signal can be arbitrage away, it will be due to the nature of markets. That's unlike self-driving car. If you taught a self-driving car to avoid collision, you know, the, the, the cars in front of you won't learn to particularly evade this collision avoidance. But that's what the next trader would do to you if you, are, if you discover a strong uh, signal. Then thirdly, there's regime change. Whatever you train a model on may not work. Uh, you know, the market environment has drastically changed over the years. Whatever happened before 2008, whatever happened before 2020, uh, whatever happened in 2020, they're all very different regimes. So if you train your model on one regime, it may not work in another regime. Uh, if you try to use that uh, you know, as an automated trading strategy. And then finally, even if there's no regime change, uh, there's always crowding. People are likely, you know, that's related to the no signal to noise ratio. Even if you start out with a strong signal, it will eventually get weaker and weaker because of crowding of the trade because of, uh, you know, after decay. So, what is, is, is that, uh, does that mean we should give up on machine learning? No, there is a method an application of machine learning to finance that we have found very useful uh, for our own production. Uh, I, I just asked my uh, colleagues to do an estimate. It has basically generated 10% of outperformance just in the last six months for us. Uh, if we were not to not use machine learning, uh, we would have you know, lost a lot, you know, 10% more than we had actually lost because we had been using machine learning for risk management. So meta labeling is the technical name, but you can think of it as a uh, risk management or pre-trade analytics layer, right? So to traders, meta labeling doesn't mean much, but let me give you a name, two names that might resonate. One is risk management. Everybody want to manage the risk. Everybody want to size their trade based on the risk. A primitive method of sizing the trade would be, oh, I look at um, uh, the VIX, or I look at the realized volatility, or I look at the uh, average true range. Those are very primitive. It, just because the market is more volatile doesn't mean that the strategy has more risk, right? It could well mean that your strategy is more profitable. <laughs> so some strategies thrive in volatility. Ours does. So, Machine learning is a much smarter way to produce a risk estimate for your strategy for the next trade or for the next day. It can give you a probability of success for every trade. And you can use that probability to size your trade. So that, in a nutshell, is what machine learning can do for you. 
risk management, trade sizing, pre-trade analytics, not to generate trading signals per se. So you might ask, okay, great, but where am I going to get the base strategy? Where am I going to get the trading signals themselves? Well, you have your simple factor model, you have your simple technical indicators, technical analysis, chart reading, what have you, but Fibonacci series, you have your fundamental indicators, macroeconomic indicators, you might even rely on your hunch, right? You can be a discretionary trader and you uh, read up news on the Wall Street bets and uh, you are bullish on uh, silver, let's, let's say. Go ahead, use that as your base strategy. The job of machine learning is to detect whether that strategy is ideal for the current environment. So for example, if you are a uh, option buyer and you always like to buy options on um, those uh, stocks like uh, GameStop, well, it might work in January, it might not work so well in February. If you apply machine learning to carefully analyze maybe over 100 predictors, whether that strategy will work in the current environment, not the environment last year or last month, but tomorrow, most important. Is it going to work tomorrow? You might be prevented from trading a buy option on GameStop strategy tomorrow or in February. So to drill down a little bit, um, again, what we try to do is to compute a probability of profit for your current trading strategy. And your current trading strategy doesn't have to be algorithmic strategy, it could be discretionary, it could be fundamental. As long as you have a track record for us to learn from. If it, if it is an algorithmic strategy, the track record is very easy to create because you have back tests, right? The, the, um, I, uh, the differentiating feature of an algorithmic strategy is that you can back test it. But if you have uh, if you are a discretionary trader, you, you won't be able to present a historical backtest. That's fine, because presumably you already have live traded a strategy for some time. At the minimum, we want to have, let's say, 500 trades or 500 days of track record for to learn from. Anything fewer than that will get some sketchy results. So if you're a discretionary trader and you have traded for some time, no worries. Just use your live trading track record as an input to the machine learning system. Now, of course, that's not enough. That is, that is part of the data input. The other half of the data input would be the predictors, and I recommend as many as possible. Technical indicators, macroeconomic indicators, uh, alternative data, big data. For us, uh, for the tail ripper strategy that we use, we trade live uh, in our hedge fund, um, we have over 170 such features. You know, hopefully, you will get uh, as many as possible, because unlike ordinary quant trading where the, you know, the the Occam's razor rule, right? Normally you would want to be parsimonious. You want to be uh, using as few uh, rules or as few indicators as possible because to avoid overfitting, uh, you know, that, that's still a good advice for the basic trading strategy. But if you want to impose a risk management layer or a pre-trade analytics layer on top of your basic strategy, the opposite advice is true. You want as many indicators as possible because we will have a procedure called feature selection to remove some of the useless features. That's something I'm going to talk about later. But at this point, just be bold. Be bold. Use as many features, hundreds if not thousands of features. It will be you are more likely to succeed with more features than fewer features in this particular application of machine learning. Uh, by the way, if you have any question, please feel free to ask uh, live. Uh, don't uh, bother with waiting until the end. Um, I'm happy to answer any live uh, questions as we go along. So, um, Back to the notion of probability. So I, I said that we are going to provide you with a probability of profit for your trade. And some of you may ask, I already know that. It's something called winning ratio, right? You know, uh, my strategy had a 56% winning ratio means that I have a probability of 56% that my trade will make money. Why do I need 
such complicated system? Well, a winning ratio is what we can call a unconditional probability of success because every day is going to be the same. It won't help you to decide whether the next trade is more likely or less likely to, be, to succeed because every day is going to be the same. You can either trade the strategy every day or you don't trade this strategy any days. Simple as that. You can pick and choose. But with machine learning, the idea, the focus is on conditional probability of profit. The condition is on the external market condition. Every day, it can give you a different probability of success. Someday, if the probability is like 0.5, you might stop trading that strategy. Another day, you see the probability of success is 0.8, you might leverage, give it a high leverage on your strategy. So for our own tail ripper strategy, for example, in the February and March of last year, 2020, sometimes the probability of success can be over 80%. It is mind boggling. You, you would never see a machine learning trading system give us such a high probability of success, but it did. And it was right. The system was right. We made over 80% gross return in three months in 2020, right? And then other times, like the last quarter of 2020, Oftentimes, it gives us a probability that is below 50% of success. And so many days, we don't trade that strategy. That's how we save ourselves 10% of a drawdown. So that's, um, this probability is really useful because it's not a constant. It changes every day so that you can adjust your leverage of your strategy. If the leverage could even be zero if the probability of success is too low. So. Um, Here's a little bit technical details, um, different machine learning models to use. Uh, let me just say that we don't want to have two simple models like logistic or linear regression, and we don't want to use complicated model like deep learning. So random forest fits the bill. Uh, at predictnow.ai, we have implemented a for random forest for you. So you would not need to uh, implement it yourself. So a lot of people ask actually at this point, you know, why do we need predictnow.ai? Why don't we just implement your own foreign forest? Of, of course you can. But bear in mind that we have a team of data scientists that struggle for six full months before we get the hang of it. It is not simple, actually, even just to implement random forest because there are many, many moving parts. It is not a simple random forest. You have to apply feature selection. You have to apply hyperparameter optimization. There are lots of moving parts. And if you want to save yourself six months and a, you know, easily cost you a hundred grand for a consultant, uh, you know, so you use my predict now, just a small commercial. So what it does in the random forest is very simple. Let's take a case where you are, you have a short volatility strategy. You short uh, the fixed future, let's say, or short options. Well, the random forest will first look at one indicator. Maybe if fix is high, you should not short it. So it will separate the data into two parts, high fix and low fix. And it might find that in the low fix regime, your shortfall has a great likelihood of success, maybe 66% chance of success. Great. So you know that when fix is low, go ahead and short your options. If it's fix is high, you might have other conditions that might matter. Maybe you need to make sure that the spider went up yesterday. If it went it, it didn't drop too much yesterday, okay, maybe you still can short it. But if the spider dropped a lot yesterday, you might have other condition, which is to look at if the interest rate has changed and so on and so forth. Hopefully you have over 100, 200 features that you will go through these kind of rules in order to distill the final result, which is to say that if all these conditions are met, don't trade. If all these conditions, other conditions are met, Okay, apply half the leverage. Or, but if this condition is met, go full size. That's how we can use random force in a gist. Uh, the input is, a, is a, as simple as a spreadsheet. So to input into our system, you can use a spreadsheet uh, that have the past return. These are your track record. Today I lose money. Today I make money. Make money is one, lose money is zero. And, uh, all these indicator, fakes, one day return, change of interest rates, blah, blah, blah. And you, we will try to learn from this data set to predict whether under a new condition, maybe today the fix is 25, maybe one day to SP return is minus 2%, maybe change in interest rate is zero. 
or negative? Well, what is the likelihood that the return is positive? That's what is going to predict lie for you. And not only will it predict, it will give you a probability of that prediction, as I said. So, um, and it will give you also all kinds of um, trace statistics, accuracy, um, AUC score. You know, if you come to our website, we will explain these terms to you, but essentially they are standard machine learning performance metrics that you can see if the model is really making sense, if your features actually have predictive power. It's very easy. It takes about one minute uh, to find that result. So, and actually, uh, I, as I said, the main use I recommend is not to generate training signals. If it is so easy to generate training signal, I won't be launching this for the public. I would be using it myself. The reason I recommend it to use it for risk management and pre-trade analytics trade sizing is because it doesn't conflict with our own offer. You know, we have our own trading signal. We merely want to improve on it. And the same technique can be used to improve on your signal. And we are not in competition because your signal is just not the same as my signal. I only trade E-mini intraday. You might be trading gold, silver, GameStop, or AMC Entertainment. Uh, we don't need to know. The data is anonymous. You do not have to tell us where you get the data from and even what the columns mean, right? So, um, so let me focus on one other aspect which might be useful. And this is that oh, a lot of traders don't trust black box, and for good reason. Even if someone tells you that your trade is likely to succeed or might not succeed, you might not trust them if it's just a number. How do you know if the number is right? Right? If your gut feeling conflict with the machine, oftentimes you will trust your gut feeling. That's not good. So feature selection is a way to peel off the, the veil, look behind the black box, because with feature selection and feature importance ranking, we will actually rank those inputs in terms of the importance and let you have a better intuition of what goes into pre making that prediction. So here it is. Uh, you know, if you have like 20 features, it might rank fix as the most important feature or one day spy the return as the second most important feature and so on and so forth right so this is one way of uh, you know ranking features and you know you will see that oh if fix is so important maybe you can include that in your base model right so not only is this uh, feature selection module help you gain more confidence and understand the predictive model better but it can actually suggest feature to you to incorporate in your base strategy. In other words, the ultimate goal of machine learning is no machine learning, that all the wisdom suggested to you by machine learning can all be included in your base model and you no longer need machine learning to help you. That would be the ultimate goal. And um, so another example, well, there's one problem with the older form of feature selection. It is because this ranking that I showed you before is actually might change every time you run the system because of random seed remember in machine learning there's some randomness we use we need to randomize some aspect of data to build a robust model but this randomization also caused some randomness in the outcome so a lot of practitioners would find that hey one time you get fixed on top another time you know macd might be the top feature and you would be confused i say which one is it and the typical solution might be to run this 100 times an average result, but that is a lot of hassle. So what we found and we, what we have also implemented is a technique called cluster-based feature selection. This way we will cluster features that are similar first and then select them all together. So we no longer select individual features, we select cluster of similar features. So for example, if we want to predict the one month ahead SPY return, we find that fundamental features, such as price earning ratio of the index, are more important than technical features, such as volatility of the market. And so they, these clusters are stable. You can run it 100 times and it always come out on top of the fundamental clusters. They are much more stable than ranking individual features. That is a sort of a unique technique uh, not unique in the sense that no one knows about it because we took our cue from Dr. Lopez, Lopez Prado. He has in, uh, he has discussed it in his books, latest book. But we are the first to really implement it in a commercial product, we believe.
Um, so to uh, summarize, to recap, feature selection helps improve interpretability. It peel back the veil. You can actually understand why the model is making that prediction, and you can extract that wisdom and put it back into your base strategy. And select, but this has one benefit, but there's a side benefit. It is that with seed, seed feature selection, you remove the noisy features so that it actually improves the out of sample performance of your strategy. So we have written two papers. The first paper, best way to select features, uh, is to be published by the Journal of Financial Data Science in the in uh, you know I think it might already have published. I will have to check. Uh, and that the other feature is the other paper is called Cluster Based Feature Selection, and that uh, article was published will be published in the Society of Technical Analysts Journal. Uh, it has been accepted. It will be published again I think this month. So please look them up. Uh, you can go to our website. One of them can be downloaded. The other, because of copyright issue, cannot be downloaded. But the second paper can be downloaded from our website. So please go to predictnow.ai and check that out. Um, so the conclusion is that machine learning should not really be used for signal generation. It should be used for regime detection, detecting whether tomorrow's regime is suitable for your strategy. The regime change every day. It's not like a regime doesn't have to last for six months. The regime can last for one hour. So you can use it for detecting the next hour or next day's regime, whether that is favorable to your strategy. And therefore, you can use that as risk management and trade sizing as a pre-trade analytics. And then finally, you can use that to rank the inputs to find out what it is really that are affecting the pop-up, uh, that is affecting your strategy success. Is it the volatility? of the market? Is it the uh, return of the commodities, futures, energy futures, or is it the interest rate? You will finally be able to identify what it is that is affecting your profitability. And better than just understanding, you will also be able to use that current value to use their current value to judge whether you should trade a strategy at all. It's not just analysis, it is prediction. It is to predict whether your strategy will work tomorrow. It's much more than just analytics which is which is what a lot of other software give you right what's the point of understanding that i have lost one million dollar because of volatility the whole point is i want to predict whether i will lose a million dollar using volatility and many 150 other features that's the whole point of risk management is predictive is not be analytic so all that has been put, put together for you as a web-based service on pretechnow.ai. You can get a free trial there uh, for one month and please feel free to reach out to ask me any questions uh, if I can. So um, if I can help you with understanding machine learning or how to use this SaaS, please feel free to reach out and many people already did. Thank you very much and I'm ho hoping to answer any questions uh, that you may have. No, okay. Thank you very much again for attending, and I hope you you guys have the uh, great rest of the day.